The playback engine settings in Pro Tools can dramatically affect the performance of recording and tracking and mixing. You can locate the playback engine settings by clicking Setup, Playback Engine. If you're recording or tracking, you want to make sure that the hardware buffer size is set lower. If you're mixing, you want to make sure it's set higher. I tend to find that 128 samples is really good for low latency recording with monitorings being sent back out to the performer. And 512 or higher is good for mixing or using virtual instruments. Now performance will vary pretty greatly depending on system. My system here is a quad core G5 uh, with a lot of RAM so I can actually go even as low as 32 samples and be just fine. What you want to remember is that the lower the number in the hardware buffer size, the more the computer has to work to keep the buffer maintained at 64 samples. So it really takes away processing, and if you've got a lot of tracks, you can start to hear clicks, pops, samples will be dropped, and it, it just won't be a very good thing. You can also check RTAS processors if you've got a multi-core um, computer. I've got four cores. Here I'm only using two of the cores, because I do have to run the OS and other applications. And especially if you're running Rewire with Ableton or Reason, it's a good, idea to, a good idea to dial down how many cores you're choosing so that you can um, use your computer more efficiently for other applications. The CPU usage limit allows you to set how much CPU Pro Tools is going to use. Um, you can see I can actually set it for this computer all the way up to 99%, which is a bit much. If I were tracking a lot of tracks with a lot of plugins, then I probably would set it higher. But with regular usage, 85% is good. And if I'm running Rewire, I'll set it to as low as 70 or 65%. And there are some other things you can do to um, do multi-tracking with lots of plugins but still not overload your system. You can disable tracks, for instance. Uh, that way active voices are not there. And it becomes a little bit of a sort of dark art in how to maximize Pro Tools performance without using an HD system. Finally, you can check the DAE playback buffer size. This is the disk buffer or uh, the read from the hard drive buffer and you can leave it at level 2. That's a pretty good setting. I found that when I'm tracking all the way up to 24 tracks and I've got it uh, set lower, Pro Tools will choke up and I'll get an error message. And this assumes that you're tracking to a separate drive, not to the system drive. And that's always a good practice. Save your sessions on a dedicated hard drive running at least 7800 RPM or faster. And um, your sessions will run remarkably smoother even if you leave these settings at let's say uh, 256 samples one processor if you've got a single processor machine 85 percent and uh, level 2 DAE